living in a hall of fame. Hi, welcome to episode four, no less. Back in the shed, lots of painting to do, let's get stuck in. Talking about attention to detail, never, ever, ever ask me to do this again. I, <laughs> I've wire-wheeled that to get all that paint off and it looks absolutely gorgeous, but I didn't, didn't want to just spray it all black because obviously that's a moving part and so on and so forth. I've actually taken like 20 minutes to, with a screwdriver just to pull down uh, a piece of paper into there so I can spray that without it going on there. Am I mad? Am, am I absolutely raving bonkers? Probably. Anyway, welcome along, like I say. Uh, hope you've got your popcorn there and a nice cold beer and, and sit back and enjoy, relax and enjoy the next hour or so uh, in my company. Thank you. Right. Spray. Let's do it. Let's crack on. Okie dokie matey, let's get this engine clean. I've done that a little bit already, look. No chemicals, just a good old brass brush. Let's, uh, let's carry on. Put some light on, it's better. Let's put some other light on, it's better. Let's put some more light on. But that. It's as quick as that, look. Right, well, I'm going to need two hands for this, so uh, I'll put you in the stand if you want to watch me cleaning it. <laughs> Beautiful, really beautiful. Many minutes later, um, we're halfway there, and I've just looked at the exhaust port and got a bit of a shock. My head definitely coming off. That is scored to pieces. Proper scored to pieces. And at the moment, this moment in time, I, uh, I looked last night for spares, you know, i.e. piston rings and things. And you can get a plus two five, plus fifty, plus seventy five, and up sort of upwards. But you can't get a standard piston, unless Andy McCall, you know, different. Uh, but yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. Right, not to dwell on that too much. This is the oil pump, fiddly d. And I tried to get it off the other day, didn't I? But undoing that, 
and the other one, wherever it is, there. And it just started to spin, didn't it? Just spin, 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 won't come off. And that's because I need to get to the end of the bolt, or the nut even. No, the bolt, there. Which means I've got to take off the farter motor. So I've got to whip that screw out there and that rusted in screw down there. Take the starter motor out, which I can get out properly then and give it a bloody good clean. And then I can remove this so I can get to that. Okay, so yeah. I just want to have a quick look up there. And lo and behold, scratched the buggery. So yeah, it's probably been done a million miles and probably been to the moon and back. Right, okay, let's crack on. Oosh, I don't know. Right, I nearly had two and a half kittens then. It's not that simple, in actual fact. We have said star to me till we have one fixing screw. We have two fixing screws. And right on the back there, see in the distance? We have three fixing screws, which is effectively there. Now, I can't get to that above because this half of the crank case is in situ. I'm kind of hoping that I undo that one there and that one there and this alloy piece comes up with the starter motor bolted to it. Now Mr Honda would not be nasty to me would he? He would have done that properly wouldn't he? I'm hoping that's the case. I'm just going to take those two screws out and see if if that third one is just in a, in a, yeah, in that little bit of housing. Oh, please, please, I can't I can't see Honda doing anything as stupid as that. Anyway, we've got to crack on. Let's have a look at it. Right, well, let's have a look up here. Whilst I turn the flywheel. Oh my God. But it doesn't look like the rings are stuck. Can you see the rings moving there? Either it's, I'm very, very lucky, and that isn't scourge, it is, um, what else can it be? Um, stuff, dirt, or, I'm a Dutchman. <laughs> yeah, that's scored to buggery, isn't it, lads? But the piston rings are okay. Okay. Right, I'm trying to get this Statia Motia off. I have got that one out was easy. I just did it with the uh, JIS screwdriver. I just undid this one. Needed a bit more in the form of uh, impact gun and impact bit. Out of an impact driver kit. This kit is uh, Silverline. That high quality brand of screwdrivers. <laughs> Where's that gone off? I don't know. Okay, so that's that. I have had no luck. Sorry, it in under that one. Just about. Put it in there with the extension bar and that in the end of it, like so. On there, shear straight away. So, as that's the only one of those sizes I've got, I tried a small Phillips out of there and that sheared off as well. Oh, God. Where is he? Judge Battleborn! <laughs> Bless him. So, I am going to resort to the only thing I can resort to, and that is my little pair of grips. My little super duper Americanos. Okay. They seem to. Oh, look at that. That was exactly it. the right size. Let's see if I can crimp it up. My mini balls. Ow. Right, 
Don't fail me now, boys. Tighten first. Jesus Christ. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Now the engine's moving. Don't share off, please. Ah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, yeah, boo boo. Don't share off. Don't share off. Don't share off. <coughs> Jesus Christ! Go on, boy. You can do it. Oh, oh isn't that good? Isn't it that good when you get a result like that? Flipping Nora. Tell you what, I thought that was going to share. I really did. And that's, that's why there's that horrible, white, crusty, rusty, flipping, oh, horrible stuff. Let me put that back down there. What's the other one? Oh, it's in there. Stupid boy. Right, now, does this come off without me getting to that back screw there? Well, the short answer is no. It won't come off without that one in the back there coming off so that is a bummer but looking at the state of that I'm going to whip the head off in a second looking at the state of that piston it's got to come off therefore I've got to wrestle with the flywheel again with my makeshift flywheel puller <laughs> so split the crank get them out two new bearings two new seals output shaft seal kickstart seal uh, partridge in a pear tree and there is a gasket as well, or two. Right, oh, milky coffee. Oh, thank you. Oh, milky brew. Thank you, madam. <laughs> Thanks very much. You're welcome. Uh, so that means I need to make a shopping list, which I was hoping I wouldn't have to. Never mind. Right, I'll whip that head off, whip the barrel off, see what that piston's like. If it is what I think it is, I think it's shot then it is a proper shop in this, isn't it? Otherwise it's going to be two gaskets and, uh, and that. Hmm. Anyway, where were we? We were trying to get this flipping oil pump off, weren't we? Oh, I've just knelt on something, which was quite sharp. Ow, ow, and again. What the chuff? <laughs> what is that? Rah, one of them bits off me flipping off my wheel there. Oh, and another bit. <laughs> Ow, and another bit. Easy stand up, for God's sake. Okay, let's see if we can do something else to get that off. If I can wedge a screwdriver in there against the back of that, whatever it is, and then hold the phone with the rest of my hand, I should be able to. Yes, I can. Good. After all that. Come on. There you come. Come on. Yes. Bit of tin work there. Let's hold on by the other screw. So that's good. Ah, right, so now I just need to undo that back nut in the same fashion. Somehow. I can get that little bit of tin work off and then the pump will come off. And it will be cleaned and inspected and tested. <sighs> cool down, cool down. Right, I'm going to be brew, I think, now. Knickers to it. Groovy baby. Well, I managed to get that little bit of tin wear off of there. Not really sure what that's actually doing as such. Do you think it's shielding? I suppose that being the exhaust pipe, it must be some sort of heat shield or something like that. Anyway, let's take this out. <laughs> okay. Ooh, ooh, okay. It's all new to me. Well, the, the gear teeth look fine. There's a lot of blackness, isn't there, on that shaft. Therefore, that shaft is obviously in the crank case uh, area. Okay. 
So that it says to me that's seen an awful lot of heat as well to go that colour. Right, so that needs to be part cleaned and, and checked. Let's have a little look in this hole. That is a bit unnerving. Look at the amount of crap in there. What is all that? Can't really. Yeah, that's mucky, isn't it? That's proper carboned up. Right, so my guess is when we whip the head off in a second, there's going to be a load of carbon build up in there. So it's probably pre ignition and all sorts when you turn the engine off. That means it runs by itself because the carbon glows red hot and therefore it acts like a spark plug. So it'll be pre ignition and everything. Right, let's take this bracket off there. I think before I do that, I need to put something in there. Get a blue towel. Right. Next time you see me, we'll be whooping his head off. Ooh, getting into the nitty gritty of it. Hmm, I'm kind of scratching my head here a bit. Things get... The plot thickens. I mean, why why would they do this, okay? You've got that steady, bolty bolt there, which it is actually a bolt. And you've got that bolty, bolty, bolty there. So I just went to pull this off, but it won't come off because... There is a bolt end there. So that's bolted from underneath behind this starter motor that you can't get off until you take that side of the engine off. Why, why is that so? Ah. Ah. Think about it, Eighty. Think about it. Come on, man. What is going on? Ah, I've just spotted something. You've got an M8 bolt there. Goes through. Get out of the way. And that also goes on to the bottom of the starter motor. So there must be another one somewhere. Ah. So let's follow that through. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I'm reckoning if I undo these two, where are we? No, these two, I reckon that start motor will come off then. And then you take the bolts out to get the motor out of that gear that was in. It's great, isn't it, when you've got a handbook? <laughs> Yeah, that's bizarre. I mean, the alarm bell started ringing when I tried to take these Phillips screws out, and there's one right behind that you just can't get to. You shouldn't have to split the crank just to get to the start motor, should you? Right, okay, well, let's not wait for anything, really. Let's just crack it off. Right, there's one of them. We don't need that on there. We need the 8 mil. Oh, right, okay. Reverse, reverse. That's one. And there's the bottom one. What didn't get? <coughs> no. Raw. Let's roll him over. Roll him over, lay him down and do it again. That's mo like it. Right, so. I reckon that's all going to tap off. Let me just give that bolt a bit of a, a bit of a squeak. Right. Hmm. 
Okay, well that's not splitting there at all, is it? Because it shouldn't, David, it should split there. Oh, it is, there is a gap. Ah, okay. <clears throat> right, in that case then I need to tap just there. Is there another bolt somewhere? That screw which holds the... You've got the screws that hold the starter motor onto this piece here. Okay, that's how done by that and the one we can't get to there. Uh, sorry, and there. But the bolts I've just taken out, I've made a gap there. And there, you can see daylight through almost. So, what is stopping that? Do you think there's another 8mm bolt inside here? That's what I'm starting to think, because I don't want to clout it too hard. I've clouted it enough so far. Well, they are pretty, pretty much opposite each other. open a bit further. See that? I reckon something's holding that Bendix gearing on in there, isn't it? Of course it is. Right, anyway guys, a Bendix, a Bendix gear is basically, you've got your motor and then you've got your, your spigot drive off the motor. And when you fire the starter motor, there's a spring on the end, a circlip, spring, and then the gear. And centrifugal force throws the gear into the sort of flywheel, if you like, the gearing, um, under sort of centrifugal force. And it, and it engages the, the flywheel, turns the engine over, and then when you take your finger off the starter motor, the spring pushes the gear back out of, out of line of the flywheel. Otherwise, the starter motor will constantly be engaged. So that's a Bendix. Right. It's bizarre to say the least. Right, I'm thinking out loud here. Okay, I'm gonna take the head off. Leave that as it is for a bit and take the head off. Let's go, let's do it. Right, let's take that head off. Shall I take the spark plug out first? I suppose I better do it, no really. Let's find a spark plug size span arrow. 19 is it? Oh, don't know. Don't know. That'll do. One of those, right, where's Mr. Bad. It's actually pretty good, actually. Mm. Oil. <laughs> okay, let's that out of the way. Let's get these off. Under there until I've got these. See, we've got a lot of a lot of gasket failure there, haven't we? Make it letting that do that to that. So we can safely say that the head gasket, the, the uh, top gasket, had gone because they shouldn't really be 
that burnt and especially that one should be carboned up. I should have made a note, shouldn't I, which orientation I'll take them out of. Right, here we go, moment of truth. That's pretty clean. You see this here? That is the carbon deposits. Carbon build up and you shouldn't be able to really scratch that off because if that was the case it would have gone down the exhaust pipe and out ages ago. A bit of paraffin will get that off. It is literally carbon. Okay, well, that, yeah, that's not bad. Okay, that surprises me. There's a lot, a lot of garb here, isn't there? All right. I suppose where that, where the head, where the engine's enclosed in that tinware. Normally, we got you got the air rushing by, haven't you, on on an open naked bike sort of thing, and the air would take away all this oily crud. Okay, well, there's. That's kind of good news. Let's have a look at the piston. See, that's... Right, okay. I couldn't really see any blow-by there. Where the, where the bolts are, I was expecting to see a little bit of black. Just to... Confirm my doubts about this head gasket. Okay, well, I'm certainly not going to be reusing that. <laughs> I do prefer copper ones, in all fairness. I don't like these tin ones with a little crease on it that squashes up. Because unless you do the follow up retorks, it's, it's pointless, isn't it? Okay, should we remove? Bore. That's um, actually it's quite a few big pieces on there. So let me get you in a bit closer. That's that. I don't really want to scratch it with anything metallic, so I'm not going to. It's quite big deposits on there, isn't there? Okay. Well, let's get rid of. Before I, before I take the piston back down the bore, let's get rid of all the crud around it. Okay. Exhaust. Exhaust. Oh, my finger fits in there quite nicely, actually. It's pretty cool. <laughs> right, shall we? Let's... I can't see any bolts holding that down, so let's just take it off. Let's give it a bit of tap with Timmy Mallet. Work, didn't it? <laughs> oh dear! Flipping amateur, isn't it? I don't want to leave her underneath any of the fins because look at the amount of flipping crud here. Look, look at that. Yeah. Right, with Mr. Rubber. worked. A bit quicker than I'd hoped for, but there we are. <clears throat> okay. Right, let's have a look down in this bore. I think we've got some nasty scoring going on there. On the exhaust side of things. And the inlet side. Or sides. Should I say. Because that's the inlet there. And the exhaust Let's give that a bit of a clean with a dirty rag. Stupid boy! Stupid! In actual fact, I had a big round brush for that. We know a song about that, don't we, children? <laughs> okay. Oh dear, yes. Yes, that is. 
bow is gouged. Oh my goodness me, I reckon if I put that on my turntable, let it play a flipping tune. There are so many grooves in it, that is horrible. So, I may have to re bore to a bigger size, depending on availability of said products. And I have a friend that can do that for me, so that's not so bad. Flipping egg. Right. Let's take a look at the Pistonian. Yeah, suspicions confirmed. Lovely loose rings, look, that's really good. So I don't need to get new rings from a new piston oversized kit. <laughs> Can you? No, no. I sounded like that bloody owl then at a bagpuss. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is just downright bloody horrible, isn't it? Horrible. Bit of piston slap. <laughs> horrible. Inlet side. Not too bad. But still signs of wearage going on there. I can see that there's little tiny pins there to keep that ring there and not let it rotate around the piston. So both rings stay in situ which is kind of good and just whip a piston ring off see what we got here see what's appertaining see what's going on oh, i can't do it with these bloody silly gloves on especially whilst holding the camera let me put you back up there Certainly got a little step there for the groove to go into. Let's clean that up a bit. Yes, it is. You've got a flat side there, look, all nice and shiny. And that side is slightly beveled inwards, so they are keyed rings. Okay. Groovy. Well, I'll keep that for an earring. That'll be a Christmas present sorted. Very, very gently. See, there is a knack to that, otherwise, they just go snap right there. Yeah, flat side, beveled side. Okay, it's got a little mark on there, it's got a little Mr. T. So that would be bottom, wouldn't it? <laughs> see if that one's got a mark on it as well. Yeah, that's got a T on it as well. So yeah, beveled edge at the top and sh fly shiny flat edge towards the bottom of the piston. So that's good. Okay, uh, that to me, see those markings on the inside of the ring? Do you know what that says to me? Spring washer. Like what, what should have gone in the, in the Suzuki. Right, let me try and get a tiny little screwdriver in it. Somewhere on this piston, there should be a spring washer. I think. A spring ring, sorry, not a spring washer. Yeah, it's there. Can't keep it in. Can't keep it in, I gotta let it in. Right, well, I think this is gonna tell us a story. Like Max Bygraves. I want to tell you a story. Come on. Yeah, that says it all, boys, doesn't it? Guess where the rest of it's gone? Yeah. There. Part of that spring ring's snapped off and has been eaten by the engine. Because I can't see it in that channel. No, it's just not there. There is no other spring ring there. So that is it. 
part of that is, see how it's gone really thin on the end there? It's just worn away and eventually snapped and gone in. That's what it should look like, square end. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Well, there we are. That tiny little spring ring has killed this little poor, poor little engine. If you dig deep enough, there's always a reason for something that happens. So, good. Um, well, good and bad, really, isn't it? I can't just lock the purse strings up. I'm afraid they're going to have to be opened a bit to, to get some more parts. I will see my mate, um, oh, crikey, what's his name? Not Carlos. Costa. I'll see my Greek friend Costa and see what he can do with that. I'll wait to, I won't buy a piston set. I won't buy it. What's it? There's no point in me buying a 0.25 oversized piston and rings if he has to ball it out to 0.5. Pointless. I'm going to give that to him and see, see what he can do with it and he'll tell me what size. Uh, well, I'll give him a list of sizes that are available and he'll do it to whatever he can do it to and then let me know and I'll have to find the piston and that to do that. Right, okay, well that's kind of good and bad in many ways. One, it's wrecked the piston, but two, microfine parts of that broken ring will be all over the place in there. Look at the, look at the heat generated there. That's incredible. So that seal and bearing will be definitely be shagged. I see we've got oil holes both sides for the two-stroke oil. Right, okay, that makes sense. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. That's where the mixture comes in. Right, okay, I'll work that one out later on. Oh well, it happens, doesn't it? Um, I, I, it's been so easy so far, relatively speaking, apart from the bloody wheel nut and that fuel that oil pump business. It's what I start over. So, but you know, I've got a my luck's just run out, hasn't it? So to speak, I am going to clean up the rest of the engine. Oh, shit! Oh, I should have done that before I took the flipping barrel off. Well, no, I couldn't, could I? Because I can't get in. Because I can't get all this off. Well, that's okay. That's fair enough. Okay, well, I'm going to... It will be a total strip down now. So, that's just put a few months on the job. Oh, well. That means I will have to... Be more meticulous whilst I'm waiting for things to happen. And it'll give me a bit of a rest, won't it? Okay, well, all good things uh, come to an end, don't they? Right, okay, I'm going to leave that there. And, oh, me blooming bruise nearly gone cold. Let's have a slurp. Mm. Mm. Oh, full cream milk. Mm -mm. Right, catch you in a bit. In the place to be, it's you and me. Right, in the shed. What are we doing? Messing. Oh, look, the flywheel's fallen off. Well, it hasn't fallen off, actually. It came off a whole lot easier. Yes, I'll use the old favourite again in there, like that, with a 6mm bolt and nut. Just simplified my last uh, effort. And clamped around there, a couple of tie wraps. And put, I just, all I did was put a bit of tension on it. Just, just did that bolt up, pr probably two revolutions. So it was just on the borderline between the, the, the grips slipping out of here and the and the tube and the tie wrap's given way and uh yeah <laughs> couple of them and bop there we go jobs are good and now that enables me hopefully to take that bolt out there and that bolt out there and then remove this dodgy piece of wiring because it's really when you're moving the engine, when you're orientating it differently, I mean, this is getting squashed, crimped, pinched, and all sorts. 
so I don't want any more crimping and pinching. So that's gotta, it's gotta come out of there, Raw, like so. Okay. Um, yeah, I overnight I I let some three in one oil. I just sat it in that little moat there, and this morning it would disappeared. So. It's all down there now, which is nice, but you do have to clean that out when you reinstall the magneto or the flywheel, if you like. That has to be oil free. It's not difficult, is it? You know. Well, there's a little woodruff key. I wonder if that will come out. <clears throat> like I say, if it's, if it's not going to come out on its own like that, I, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I will endeavour to wipe off this oil off of here, then I will put a bit of tape all the way around a few few laps just to hold that woodruff key in there if you see there that, that's what the woodruff key does as you slide it down this is tapered this hole is tapered inwards like that see that taper that's what holds that on there tight as a drum and the and the uh, what do you call it key goes in that little groove there that's it woodruff key woody and roughy so we have no points to speak of. I'm just trying to... No, there are no contact sets on this, so it's definitely electronic. So I guess the very early versions, the 84, 85, uh, they were known as Aero 80s, uh, I think in the in uh, USA. And then they become Visions over here. Yeah, because they were Aero, then Lead... As in lead, lead. That's the um, spelling for it. Uh, so looking for parts is a bit of a gimmick, really, because you type in, you know, in, here in the UK, Honda Vision NH80, uh, all you get come up is American NH80ME parts, and those differ quite significantly. Some parts are the same, admittedly. But none of the fairing panels are the same. Oh, look at that. What's just turned up? Oh, super strong latte. Don't mind if I do. Mm. Right, going off topic a little bit. Andy McCall, so you are a diamond, aren't you, you little sausage? He's managed to find a proper, proper uh, manual for this particular bike stroke engine uh, the NH80 it's the 85 model book it's the um, sort of like engineer's manual if you like it's not it's not like a Haynes manual but it's it's not too dissimilar <clears throat> so I have been um, perusing the pages of that over tea and yeah it's a couple of things are different on the engine but it only you know, it's not going to put me off. And, and it's fantastic. But Andy, thank you, sir. That is really going to help me no end. Um, I mean, I quickly read, read at tea time. Uh, yeah, I quickly read something at tea time and thought, uh, yeah, I'm glad I knew that now. Because I would have gone in gung-ho. And, and boobed it up probably, but there we are. Right, leave me to it. I need to strip this bit back. I mean, the engine's pretty much cleaned up, as you can see. It was really filthy, wasn't it? But now it's really not bad at all. The oil pump is out, as you saw earlier. And I've yet to take all this gubbins off, but I can't do that until that covers off and the bolt's taken out of there. And I can do this, take that out, and I've got access to both sides of the crankshaft, which is nice. I've yet to order some parts. I've got a bit of a plan going on with the engine. Okay, here's the piston. That is not usable. It is basically an egg cup, isn't it, for want of a better word. That's 48mm. That is a standard 80cc piston for this bike. 12mm gudgeon pin, um, so on and so forth. Uh, right, in here is the oil pump. 
in here's the head. Now the head is usable. It needs to be it's been soaking in there for a good couple of days. Right, let's pop that on there. Move that over a bit so it doesn't fall down the hole. Incidentally, there are four bolts on there. I think I spoke about those earlier. See those four bolts which hold the fan on. I was thinking of ways of putting like a, I don't know, a 12 mil socket there, 12 mil socket there, long bolts down through on a bolt, on a, on a bar, you know, an old spanner or something, and then a middle threaded bolt which you just wind down and, and pop it up. But that was my last result, if, if that didn't work. Okay, so barrel, yes, it is scored there, basically. And to a lesser extent, oops, oh bugger. Will you sit still? Oh yeah, this is the worst part here. That is literally that sort of 25 degree sort of from there to there that is really nasty so that will need uh redoing won't it and then honing um mate paul's got a got a honing tool i have a friend in andover who who i might just take this to old costa i might just take this to him and say costa can you do something with that, please? And here is the new piston. Can you get that? Can you rebore it so that fits? And just see what he says, because the new piston that I've ordered is 20 quid, and it is one mil oversize. So it's 40, It's a 49 mil uh, piston. So, yeah. If it's all systems go with that, the only other option I have is a a 90cc head kit which come barrel piston rings that kind of stuff and it's identical to this 80 cc head the 90 cc head only thing is different is that is there literally that whole piece is round here literally like that like a revert like a mirror image so i can cut off flange on exhaust pipe to get that on there and you know, re-weld it sort of you know that sort of distance around but what a load of faff if I can get away with buying a new piston getting that re-do re breed it's the way forward isn't it anyway I can't do anything until the piston's here then I'll take the piston to my to Costa in Andover saves you messing around Paul um, then we can uh, whether Costa hones it out as well or what I don't know I, I don't know but it's just yeah wait and see isn't it really um, and then I've got to see what it's like inside here before I start ordering brake shoes I'm going to do brake shoes wheel bearings engine gasket kit engine crank bearings engine crank oil seals, new drive belt, the list is starting to grow, sadly. Uh, what I might do, just to keep the pennies down, we're talking pennies now, so if I, if I don't buy brake shoes, that saves me 18 quid. And if the man on the, on the MOT station says, yeah, brakes are fine mate, then they're fine, okay? If he says, oh, they're getting near the edge of their limit, then yeah, okay, in six months' time, I will buy new pants, new shoes, and do that, because I've got lots going on this end, lots and lots. Like I said, the Himalayan is going. Uh, I will be up for sale sh soon, if anyone wants to buy it. Drop me a line. Uh, make me an offer, basically. Uh, you know what the bike's like. It's, it's not standard, i.e. I've put my own screen on there, and the headlight turns with the handlebars not they're not on a bracket that stares straight ahead sort of thing so that's that 
Uh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to stop babbling and crack on because I'm wasting valuable time. Mm -mm -mm. It must be love, love. Sake. It must be love, love, love. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> he thinks I'm mad. I think I think I'm mad too. Right, where are we? Shed. E D. Look, look at what has happened to this engine. It fell apart, and it fell apart for a good reason. Actually, I needed to get inside, and I needed to find out. What was going on? Okay, right. Let's uh, let rewind a little bit because I needed to get all this gump off, didn't I? All this, this starter motor and all the rest of it to get that bracket off to get to get it out of the way to clean the engine. Okay, that was the initial thing. So I thought to myself, well, there must be something in here holding that in. That is this. The gearing of the starter motor, the Bendix, which which comes forward like so and engages this gear to turn the engine over when the centrifugalness uh, happens when you press the starter motor because it's on a, a spiral uh, drive. So that's that. But I can't see anywhere in there where there's a bolt to undo, to drop that lot out of there. So I'm still none the wiser. Anyway, I have obviously taken off the flying wheel. That come off with a, with a little bit of a fight, but no, nowhere near as bad as the uh, the FZ51. That was quite good. Uh, here we have the variator. I'm just trying to look for the other part, which I can't find because it's in there cleaning. Okay, now basically... <clears throat> it's this engine differs it's two stroke obviously this engine differs from the FZ in that it is a belt drive as opposed to the chain drive in the FZ50 so variator how does the variator work well basically it's, it has a big elastic band or belt which let's have a look at the belt Winnie please that's how the belt come off it's sort of I'm not quite sure. I think it's just salt and junk. But it's it's not too bad. The numbers on it are this. So I don't know if that's original. If someone could let me know in the comments if that's an original Honda Bell. Uh, this side is a bit a bit rusty. So, again, not sure why. I think looking at the clutch gear end, there's quite a bit of rust on this. This hasn't turned for a very long time. It's obviously a tiny bit of moisture in there when, the, when it was turning it off, and now it's like that, you see. Anyway, this, this V-drive does not open. Please, Winnie. This does not open. This is fixed. Okay, so that is as it is. And the belt turns, and it turns this, and when it gets up to a certain sped, the clutch shoes fling out and grab hold of this drum and transfer the, the, the drive to the output shaft. Thus. Okay, so how does it increase speed easy? Well, simple thing is, you have... In here, you have what's called some rollers, and they are well greased, actually. Look at that grease in there. So I can't wait to see, by taking off these 7mm or 6mm nuts, bolts, I can't wait to see what condition these rollers are in. So basically, that slides in and out of there. Now what pushes, what makes that go like that easy? Well... Funny you should ask, because in here there are rollers. Now what I mean by rollers, it's not hair rollers, it's these things. These are rollers for a scoop drive. And you have one in there, one in there, 
one in there, one in there, and one in there. So you have a, you have six effectively, and there's a slope in there. Okay, so when the centrifugal force of this thing spinning throws those rollers outwards, it opens up to allow the rollers to move towards the outside of this dimension there, which pushes the drive out there, you see, like that. And that, in turn, pushes this other half of this, the other V-shaped part, it pushes it away from this surface. No, it doesn't, E.T. It doesn't do that at all, sir. Let me start again. Right, <clears throat> it starts off like that, uh, with the rollers here, effectively, there and there, 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 there and there. And as this starts to rotate, the centrifugal force throws the rollers up there, which pushes this out. So that's top gear, that's tick over, okay? And anywhere in between is acceleration. So when it's there, and the other half of this angled variator is here, same angle as that here, the belt, obviously, is down there. Let me just put that there and put that like that, you see? So that is effectively there. Okay, like that. And as the centrifugal force pushes the rollers out and that opens up, this plate comes nearer, obviously, because it's touching this plate here, closes up that gap doesn't it? it goes like that which forces on this angle here which forces the belt to travel from there up to there yeah because this is effectively closed like that is okay so as this rotates and pushes the belt out there it goes from spinning like that that speed to spinning like that speed so that is pulling an awful lot more on this and increasing the speed that is how basically it works uh google it <laughs> as best i can say to that uh that's my stupid explanation anyway there we are right so many things to talk about the most important thing being i've made a find actually before that even mr andy mccall has sent me this through the post so that is going to be i don't really want to touch it my oily fingers but in there trust me it is uh, let me, uh, uh, yeah everything you need to know about this uh, this beastie although it's an, it's the 90 version and that's the 85 version underneath it's mechanically completely different <laughs> now the bodywork is pretty much the same we can see there, you know, they've got the beak on it, and but my front bits are slightly different. There, the cap, caps that go over this system here are slightly different. Uh, my indicators aren't built in; they're not that 80s. They're they're literally up on the rack there, and that's where they are supposed to be for the 90 model. As for the rest of it, it is pretty much the same, apart from that bit's completely different. <laughs> but you get the idea. Underneath. The, en the engine is exactly the same as the aero or the lead. It's, it's a little bit confusing because you've got like, the vision in this country uh, from 90 onwards. The aero and the lead is American. Oops, sorry. Uh, the, the, yeah, it, it, it is American. So you've got the aero, the lead and the vision. Same bike. Over the years, the, the, the panelling has changed and some little bits have been tinkered with uh, under there. So effectively yeah i mean this one the battery is under the seat whereas my one the battery is in a little panel there and uh, what are the differences there the oil pump gubbins is slightly different as well under there and the oil uh, two-stroke oil tank is still in the same place but it's it's completely different because you've got the battery sat in there whereas my one it's all oil tank so it's larger it's bigger -er. So that's that. Thank you, Andy McCall. You, sir, are up there in the echelons of, of Mission Impossible Part 10. You know, that 
Yeah. Thank you. That's all I can say to that. What is this fucking phone needs here? I hear you cry. Let's keep it real. The find is that. Now, I took that off straight away many moons ago. All right, Andy. <laughs> and I took a few pieces off, which I sort of put in there, like the mirrors and the bracket and this, that and the other. And I thought to myself, I'd put it all away in the drawers. But I hadn't. I put it in the top box. One of the pieces that I sort of kind of been looking for. Buzz off. I've got little flies. That go, Gets away. I have garlic breath. That should be enough. There he is. There he is. He's not looking brilliant. Bless him. He's got a lump. Doctors. Uh, vets tomorrow. Uh, he's got to go there for uh, his inoculations and all that kind of stuff. His yearly treatment which is, which is which is paid for through the insurance but he has a nasty lump on his side which is where his kidney is and I think it, it can't be Lyme's disease because he's running around like a six-year-old like a two-year-old but all the other symptoms and he's not vomiting but all the other symptoms is Lyme's disease I don't get it because that affects the kidney you see oh, there we go anyway sidetracking uh, yeah, there were a few parts. Come and have a look. That's the best way to do it, isn't it? I found this. Well, Caroline found this, didn't you? Yeah. In her greenhouse. How did it get there? This is the piece. I kind of thought I'd seen already, but well, I couldn't remember where I'd seen it. Well, of course, it's in here. So we've got the air cleaner. That's where the phone goes around there. Now it all clips into that, that piece that's now up in the loft. And the two rear indicators, of which one of them, the bracket is broken. That's that one. And then that's that one. Yeah, there's like a metal bracket which goes onto the rack frame. And one of these, I think it's the right hand one, is snapped. So there's two more things to go in the parts cleaner. As it does that, it's all greased up and it's got hypoid oil all over it, so that needs a good scrub a dub dub, doesn't it? But there it is, so I'm happy bunny. It's great when you find parts that you think, I don't know, are missing or whatever. Right, piston, barrel and bore. Well, we know that bore is scratched. We've done all that. You've seen the photos. There's the piston. It's well slapped. I've learned so much over this last year about two stroke well I've never done on two stroke before and I I have found out that all pistons are larger at the bottom they are tapered don't believe me get your take your bike take your bike apart take your piston out and measure it <laughs> there you go yeah it's it's wider at the bottom it is basically a hair's breadth narrower than the bore at the bottom so it is a nice snug fit and at the top it's tapered inwards so that is there you go and the rings counteract for that floppiness that's what the rings are for to make a gas tight seal sort of type stuff okay and there you go i didn't know that i did not know that but i do now who knew anyway that's that i have a friend um costa I'm going to take this to him tomorrow. I'm going to do a round trip, take Doggy to to Vetchel's and, and drop this at Carlos's. He's hopefully going to hone that to one mil over because we have got a piston. That is one mil over. And lovely it is. Exhaust. There. It's a beautiful piece of kit. So there we go. So for 20 quid, mustn't grumble. Obviously, that just... I mean, if I got a mallet, I could whack that in there, but it's its one mil bigger. So one mil bigger is, is a, a canyon of space. So I need to get that sorted out tomorrow. I'm going to strip this down a bit to check the rollers. 
and see if they've got any flat spots. What happens is where the rollers do what they're called, they roll from inside to outside when, when the engine's speed, speeded it up. Um, sometimes they can get a flat spot. And that, basically what that means is they don't roll. They, they sort of slide a bit and then they eventually, they stick. So therefore you don't get, you only get sort of acceleration to there. You don't get the full acceleration because the rollers haven't slid right out to the outside edge there. So that needs to be checked. Uh, I'm not even going to make a guess as to what's going to go on there. Um, just need to give this a bit of a tidy out. There's nothing really seriously wrong with that. That's all dry. I, I took the gasket off. I'm going to make another gasket to go on there. I've got my gasket paper, haven't I? It, there's no oil in here, so that's fine. Um, well, I say there's no oil in there. There looks to be a bit of oil, so I'm guessing that the output shaft oil seal to gearbox... Uh, no, the internal seal, sorry. Uh, oh. Here to gearbox. I reckon that's oh, gone. Oh. What's up? Listen to Walty. Oh Let's dear. Get a claws cut. Oh my god, I need mine cutting as well. <laughs> oh, cats, dogs, who'd have them? Anyway. So, yeah, there is a little bit of moisture in there, which, which doesn't help in grippage of drive belt, does it really? Don't need any of that going on. Anyway, I'm going to keep that yeah. very, very safe. I'm going to leave that nice clean up, degrease and all the rest of it. So, there's not really a lot I can do in here. I'm just checking that the all the gearage is um, straight and there's no teeth missing on the gearage and all that kind of thing. Good clean up and I really need to find out how to get this off. Which means delving into the book of, of pleasure. So I need to find out what's going on there. Right, that's enough for me to be getting on with. Oh, bloody hell, it's thundering as well. Oh, shit. Okay, right, I catch you. Oh, bought a new tool. Thanks, Mr. Paul, for recommending something like this, which is a honing tool. As you can see, it's top of the market. US Pro. And that basically is, is, a, is a honer. And basically, you, you've got like a tripod effect there. As you, when you undo that nut there, that allows this spring cap to go up. And this is spring load. Excuse me. I know you're not brilliant, but I'm filming. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> it's people. They are allowed to exist outside our gate. Yes. Right. <laughs> Map it. Yes, comes out into like a tripod of three fingers, uh, and it's sort of spring-loaded, and you put that inside the bore, and you soak it with oil, and you go up and down sort of every second with it with that on the end of your drill and you hone and make that cross hatch pattern inside the bore that's to be done after it had been after it's been honed out um bored reboard okay you must be bored now go and get yourself a mug of tea or coffee and i'll catch you back here in two ticks groovy cool well i have just Polished up those parts that you've just seen in, that, in those two photos. They were, were brackets and bits and pieces uh, from the uh, NH80. Now, I've had a thought. Many of you guys will, will recognise this kind of thing. Okay, you've got the, that box onto the frame of the bike or whatever, and, and they curl around and they hold the cables in situ, uh, etc. There are many of these on this uh, scoot, and most of them. I've done that. You see, with the plastics delaminated from the metalwork and corrosion has set in. Now, I've had a brainwave. Yes, it did hurt. Um, what's stopping me standing knifing down there, peeling back that old plastic and throwing it in the bag of bin and re dipping them in some hot molten plastic? What do you reckon? Has anyone of you guys, have you guys tried that? Uh, yeah, is that a thing? I don't know. But yeah, I have so many. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous putting that back on the bike. A, it's going to keep on corroding and getting worse. And B, it just looks shite, doesn't it? And you've got sharp edges there, which could uh, cut into cables uh, and all the rest of it. So yeah, that's an idea. I'm just thinking about doing that. 
Uh, I'm just trying to think about what sort of plastic I'd use for that. It, it has to be, I mean, that's it's fairly hard. It's not rubberized, but it feels sort of grippy. It's not your, your standard sort of plastic, is it? Um, what would you use to dip? ABS plastic, perhaps? So if I've got enough enough ABS plastic, perhaps an old panel or something I might have knocking around somewhere, just molten it up in a pot and yeah, tell me what you think guys, down the bottom. Right, I'm just going to delve into this, take these parts out and give them a good clean. There are many parts in there. Those parts that I've just done on the brush go in a tub of oil. There, there are many parts in there. Screws, nuts, bolts, washers, springs, you name it, it's in there. Okay, I'm not going to do anything more to this yet. Uh, because, just because, uh, I want to see what happens with this uh, uh, barrel. This part, I've given a bit of a clean already, as you can see. It's been in the uh, in the paraffin uh, with a few brushes. And, and it's fairly clean. It's not brilliant, but it's, yeah, it's fairly clean. I initially thought that was plastic, but it's not. It is, it is alloy when I took it off. And I could see that from there as well. Uh, Joey! <laughs> so that is going to be roughed up with a bit of Scotch Brite, which is basically a, a pot scouring pad. And I am going to reset in it. I have yet to buy some more satin black, which I will endeavour to do so. It will be acrylic. Uh, not like a but black acrylic satin black. Okay. Uh, right, let's have one more look at this top box. Because, forget me if I'm wrong, I do believe that is a Rickman. Hey, a Rickman. I reckon that's a genuine, original Rickman top box. Now, because of my old fruit machine days of repairing it and moving on, I have plenty of these things lying around. So... Because the key doesn't is not well, the, I haven't got the key. Simply, I can replace that, so that'll be all nice and working. Get that tongue as well there, ready to go. And I can take that off and give that a bit of a polish. Oh, spid! Oh, dead spid! Is that screw there? It looks like a, a gutter bolt, doesn't it? Well, gal well I say galvanised. That's not galvanised because it's all rusty. Right, I'm going to give this a good clean out and see what happens. Take these parts out, obviously, give them a clean. I'm going to disassemble it. I see what, take these little Phillips out and see what state these hinges are in. And then I'm going to somehow treat it. What I might do first of all is literally to go over it, give it a clean first of all, and secondly, go over it with the hot air gun and just see if I can uh, re energize these, the oils that are in the plastic to see if it will come back. Um, you know, a uniform colour because we've got we've got light, we've got dark, we've got scratches, and all kinds of nastiness going on there. Gouges. Now, if any of you have ever tried that with the heat gun to to bring out the oils and darken it down to its original sort of uh, charcoal colour, you will know that it is a B1 TCH, absolutely a nightmare because you can do one part, and then as you move along, you you come away or go go nearer, and it sort of starts melting the plastic and you never get a uniform heat so in, if i had a huge kiln i would put put it on sort of 150 whack it in there and, be, and it should do it in a uniform manner but it won't will it because i don't have a kiln and i'll probably do, maybe probably be a little pile of plastic in the bottom oh look wheelie bin perhaps i could melt down my wheelie bin to do those dips for those brackets hmm I wonder. Right, so that's my next step. Unfortunately, that will be in the next episode because I have lots to get on with. This one must be nearing an hour, if not over an hour. So, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're new to my channel, where have you been? Uh, like, subscribe, please. Hit the notification button. I put out videos every Friday night at nine o'clock. So, get your popcorn, can of beer, or your glass of uh, Chardonnay, or whatever you, your uh, tipple is, but Nuki Brown. And uh, join me uh, for an hour and sit and watch me make mistakes and then put them right again. <laughs> okay, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Uh, thank you for your tips, specifically. And a big hello to uh, Rodney yeah, uh, in Australia. Oh, good day, Blake. <laughs> good day, Blake. That's so cliche, isn't it? 
All right, mate. How you doing? It's good, good to meet you. Thank you for your messages. Uh, fantastic wombat. You are a card, sir. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.